The year is 1955. Emerging from World War II, Americans believe anything is possible. The Brooklyn Dodgers win the World Series. Dwight D. Eisenhower is the first president to appear on color TV. Minimum wage is a dollar an hour, and a show called The Honeymooners premieres on American television. That year, the first McDonald's opens. Discovery of the polio vaccine is announced. Elvis Presley makes his first TV appearance, and Disneyland opens in California. That year, Rosa Parks is arrested after refusing to give up her bus seat to a white person in Montgomery, Alabama. James Dean is killed in a car accident. And the Cold War intensifies. And in Tumwater, Washington, Ted McGill, a bottle house worker at the Olympia Brewing Company, heard about credit unions and started talking to his fellow workers about starting one of their own. After hard work and considerable persuasion, Ted called it jawboning. OB Credit Union is chartered on February 15th, 1955. My name's uh, Ed Baldwin. Way back, way back in Bottle House A, Ted McGill come up to me and said, Hey, Ed. How about I join the credit union? I said, what's that? I didn't know what a credit union was. <laughs> and I said, sure, and the next thing I knew I was a member. Used to go up where, where they, they had a, in their own home, the office was there. And I'd go up there when I needed money. Uh, for a car, bought a brand new car at Fleming Harvey Motors downtown Olympia, 50 Ford. So good. <laughs> In the early years, Ted McGill was the credit union. He would walk around the brewery with membership cards, loan applications, and receipts stuffed in his breast pocket. Some say it was like the whole credit union was in that one pocket. Ted also gave out share withdrawals and loans right there on the bottle house floor. Ted used to walk around the brewery and on his, on his break, he was not a full-time manager when the credit union started, and he would stuff his pockets full of deposits and account numbers and go home at night and spread that all out on the dining room table, and he and Vi would sort it out and post, and um, he was the driving force behind that credit union when it started. At night, when Ted got home, he and his wife Vi would post the books and make the necessary bank deposits right there in their living room. Their home served as the hub of the credit union during the early years, and Vi was an integral part of it. She worked alongside Ted in just about every capacity, from early day strong box keeper to modern day accountant, cashier, and computer operator. If Ted was the foundation of the credit union, Vi was the cornerstone. I came to work at OB Credit Union in July of 1969. Uh, Ted was still there, uh, Vi was retiring. And I actually uh, came to work to replace her, or she was working part-time, and decided she wanted to be home, so I said that I would be interested in the job, and they hired me practically on the spot. Um, and I stayed with the credit union for 34 years, saw a lot of history, a lot of changes. Many brew house workers remember standing in Ted and Vi's modest living room on Capitol Way, making withdrawals or chatting with Ted, sometimes for hours, in order to secure a loan. Back then with Ted, loan processing was less formal, but just as in-depth and comprehensive. Eventually, the credit union outgrew the living room on Capitol Way, and the brewery offered them office space at 316 Schmidt Place, the lovely first home of the Schmidt family. In 1975, OB built the 205 Clark Place building, where it continued to grow until 1985, when OB constructed the Cleveland Avenue branch in Tumwater, which serves as its current headquarters. While we were building the um, credit union office on Clark Place uh, in 1971, the year before that, the brewery had decided they needed our office space. They had donated office space to us at, at 316 Schmidt Place, and they needed that office space for their expansion, so they put us down in the old brewery. And I'm talking about the old brew house down the hill, one lane road. We uh, did some leasehold improvements on the office space on the uh, west end of that building and um, occupied that office for about a year. And uh, there were bats in that building. We thought we had sealed off the building pretty well, 
but uh, I can remember one Friday when I was going on vacation and we were ready to turn the lights out in the credit union and I looked over and there was a bat hanging over my desk. And I just said it had better be gone when I get back from vacation. Strong leadership has been the foundation of OB from the early days. The credit union has grown and prospered because of the capable guidance of men and women who made OB their life's work. Well, Ted decided to retire in January of 1971 and the board of directors hired Bob Shogren, who had uh, been on the board of directors and had worked as a tour guide at the brewery. And uh, he was there for about 15 years. And uh, then when he retired, uh, the credit union hired Bruce Kramer. And then Bruce later hired James Collins as our CFO. So I had the privilege of working with all four of the executives who have ever run the credit union, which is kind of an interesting perspective for me to see the different uh, styles of leadership. You know, Carol was, was just was a great help in introducing me to the community, to the members, uh, to the folks who had been around a long time. Uh, was was really a, a great help. And uh, when I started, she was the administrative assistant. Um, we moved her to the. Uh, we finally changed the uh, the CEO's title from treasure manager to president, uh, and Carol became the first vice president of the credit union. You know, there was a time in uh, the late '80s when there was. Uh, an article in the Seattle Times at that time about the 12 um, poor, poor, the, the 12 least strong credit unions in, in Washington, and OB was one of those. Uh, and fortunately, it hit the paper on a Sunday because no one apparently reads the Times on a Sunday. And we got very, we were geared up for phone calls. Never really got much in the way of phone calls. And uh, I always look back at that uh, of the 12 credit unions, we're the only one that's still in business. So my name is James Collins. I started at OB in 2002 and I was the Chief Financial Officer working for my predecessor, Bruce Kramer. Um, it was an exciting ride from, from 2002 and we uh, had to deal with the issues of the financial meltdown as well as a lot of technology changes uh, through the years. And in uh, 2010 I was selected as the next CEO and started in January 2011. So since 2011, the credit union has grown far beyond anybody's um, ideas, aspirations, or even dreams. Um, we are now well within the top 3% of all credit unions in the country, membership growth, loan growth. Um, we've hit uh, million dollar uh, net return years the last two years in a row. And we're now uh, one of the strongest credit unions in the country. The bottle shop employees, the brew house employees, all loved the credit union. And they were there every every Thursday was payday, and they would line up, and, and they kept our lobby pretty busy. Ted's beginnings in the bottle shop seemed to have really resonated with the employees, and so um, they really utilized our services. And it was it was always fun to see them on, uh, on Thursdays. Uh, we, pretty much drove the local bank out of business. Holidays were always a good celebration at the credit union, and we always um, we always decorated and we dressed in costumes for Halloween, and we always got into the holiday spirit. But that isn't what I remember most about the credit union. The annual meetings were memorable in those days. Annual meetings were reunions of sorts for members, brewery workers, friends, and family. Hundreds of people attended and enjoyed prizes, games, food, and of course, Olympia beer. It was a chance for old friends to laugh together again, and it reinforced the common bond members felt as a part of the OB community. Well, you know, one of the first questions I asked the board when I was hired is, um, what happens if the brewery closes? And that was almost heresy, because at that time, uh, no one contemplated the brewery might close, and, and I had suggested to the board that we need to think about expanding our field of membership and the eventuality that should happen. So. Uh, in the early 2000s, the state changed the, um, the, the way they, they uh, sign the field of membership, and uh, so the board made the decision on the field of membership, not the regulator. So I had proposed to the board at a planning conference that we extend our field of membership uh, to half a dozen counties on the west side of the mountains. And one of the board members asked, well, how much would it cost if we did the whole state? I said, well, it's really nothing. So he said, well, why not? And so I said, well, why not? And so uh, 
the, uh, like most credit, most state charter credit unions, expanded their field membership to cover the whole state. For the Olympia Brewery, the final whistle blew on June 20th, 2003, and the plant shut its doors a week later. The legacy of a thriving industry that supported a community was left to memories. OB was there to help many of its members adjust to this new reality. One of the offshoots of that is when the brewery did close, um, you know, we were in a position that we could help the folks that were involved and they were still working their transition uh, through job training, uh, you know, job recruitment, uh, you know, just w however it took them to, to move on to the next uh, phase in their life uh, without uh, incurring you know, as much financial hardships as, as could have been there. So I think that the, I, I was really proud that we were, the credit union had grown to the size that they could afford to carry folks and help them along until they were back on their feet. Through the years, OB has remained relevant and in step with an evolving social and economic landscape. Well, I think, uh, I, I think this, the, the moves that the credit union is making, uh, expanding the, the indirect lending, uh, I think the I-502 accounts was a, was a wise decision. Um, I think the staff they have has managed that very well. And uh, you kind of got to go, uh, you can't do what everybody else is doing in this business because you'll just get eaten alive. So you got to go out there and find something new and different, uh, or at least off the beaten path a little bit, uh, that there isn't so much competition. And I think that's what, uh, what the current manager is doing a very good job at. 60 years is the measure of what can be achieved if one person gets an idea and sticks with it. So this is our 60th year and it's going to be an exciting year. And I also anticipate the next few years will be as exciting and as uh, energized as we are today. They say Ted McGill used to hold the whole credit union in his shirt pocket. Today, OB Credit Union has five branches, over 20,000 members, and is one of the fastest growing financial institutions in the country. Too big for Ted's shirt pocket, but we still honor our past by working daily to improve on what Ted began. And while much has changed in the last 60 years, our mission has not. Service, quality, and commitment. Our members are the heart of OB and the reason for our success. We will always be here for our members.